Welcome back to Morning Trade Live. We're watching the S&P get close to 5,000. Let's take a look at the trends, the breadth, the indications, and more with Willie Delwish joining us from High Mount Research and business professor at Wisconsin Lutheran College. Willie, great to have you back. Thanks, Oliver. Glad to be here. Appreciate that, sir. Uh, let's start with your checklist, your broad look at the market. Uh, you've got some good stuff in here that you track. Uh, whether it's bull market behavior or not, looks like five out of six right now. Yeah, yeah, we are. That's um, that's an improvement we saw over the course of of the fall, and um, even as you know, breadth hasn't been maybe as robust as some people want. We haven't seen that expansion in new highs, but we still generally are seeing more new highs and new lows. So that that's a positive. The trends from a price perspective um across the board are all rising i mean you can see it there the acqui so all country world index the s p 500 um the value line geometric index even the median stock the trend is, is rising there the one outlier is a percentage of global markets above their 50-day average um and that over the past week or so has been bouncing back and forth above that threshold so um not a lot of concern there from our, our bull market uh behavior checklist it it looks pretty good at this point okay so uh, the global markets that are still a little bit more sluggish, kind of the outlier here, U.S. best house on the block still seems like. Yeah, it is. Um, and and that, that isn't to say there aren't good opportunities globally. I mean, you, you look at, um, I was looking at charts in India making new highs today, um, Mexico uh, making new highs, Canada and Japan look attractive right here. So so yeah, the, the U.S. is maybe the best house on the block and there's some 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 bad neighborhoods globally, but that isn't to say that there aren't opportunities wherever you look around the world. Okay. Seems like uh, the big threat here to the stock market, which was the bond market uh, two years ago, a little bit last year too, has been less of a threat. We've been kind of trading more in harmony uh, as we saw stocks rally alongside yields on Friday. Uh, you've got a good chart that takes us way back uh, looking at the stock bond relationship, what stocks do when the yields are rising, what they do when they're uh, falling. And much of this changed basically around the financial crisis. That bottom line on the top panel shows us the muted behavior of stocks when yields are going up. Might that start to change? Um, well, maybe, but so far, I mean, this, this pattern, this behavior, I mean, I show it going back to 2000. I mean, you can go back to the 60s and pretty much if 26 momentum in corporate bond yields is is higher, then stocks struggle. Whenever whenever it starts to level off and fall, stocks enjoy a tailwind. That's something that we're seeing right now um, as, as bond yields have come off their highs. So um, that that's that is a bullish indication from my perspective um, in terms of liquidity for the market. The corporate bond yields are, are a tailwind for stocks right here. Okay, so as long as uh, we don't get any explosive moves in rates higher, uh, we should be all right. I did kind of notice a little bit of a tick up um, in the far, far right side of that chart when yields are rising. So the, the pressure of rates so far in 2024 hasn't uh, broken the trend. Yeah, so so we've, um, I mean, th this, con this pattern can continues to work. We, we've seen yields come down, the momentum and yields. So remember, this is this is 26 week momentum. So basically wow. six week momentum, where are yields now versus where they were six months ago. Um, if they're lower than where they were six months ago, that has traditionally been a tailwind for stocks. Got it. Okay. Uh, it's a little longer term perspective. This year's creep in interest mm -hmm. rates higher hasn't uh, really presented too much of a, a trend threat to the market. When you look at uh, financial conditions, uh, you look at the St. Louis Fed Financial Stress Index. Tell me what you're gathering from that right now. Yeah, uh, for as much as we are talking about um, concern about liquidity and concern about stress and the impact of you know the higher yields and the tightening from the Fed, um, yeah, I mean, you can see we're we're back to, to uh, the least amount of stress that we've seen in, in quite a while here. Um, that spike that we had early last year um, related to the, the bank failures out in California. Um, you know, you guys earlier were talking about, uh, you know, bank stresses in, in New York. If that's going to be something systematic for the market, then I would expect to see 
this sort of indicator start to move higher, that the market would indicate that there's stress emerging. But right now, we don't see it. And so, um, you know, in some ways, it's, it's pretty good. You've got bond yields as a tailwind. You've got breadth and trend holding up, and you don't really see signs of stress here um, in the market. That, that's a pretty good mix for if you're a bull right here. Okay. Yeah, pretty good uh, situation. Uh, not a very stressful financial condition backdrop, and it might get less so if we've got cuts coming. Uh, do you think the market's lofty expectations for a massive rate reversal have been the reason for why these conditions have loosened? Um, I mean, that could be. You you, you are seeing um, bond yields move move already in anticipation uh, of rate cuts, but but I, I I would say if we we step back a little bit and just realize that even as the Fed was was raising rates and still talking about raising rates, we weren't seeing those signs of stress. So it could be that there's a delayed reaction there that it it doesn't matter where peak rates are, but if rates stay higher for longer, maybe you start to see that. But so far that the, there's not evidence of of the type of stress that you would expect to see if if we were headed towards some sort of um sustained period of weakness i mean choppiness yeah we can handle that but in terms of a st sustained downturn the evidence is not there at this point okay uh let's take a look at some more momentum measures uh for a while uh basically up until i think kind of like the middle late of last year uh, you were pointing out that there were still uh, more companies making lows than highs, or that at least the number of companies making highs was very limited. Looks like things are starting to turn up here a little bit, Willie, but are they giving us a coast clear? Because uh, it looks like still the blue bars here, which is where bulls want to be, it's kind of muted still in terms of new highs. Yeah, that, that, so we, we have more new highs than new lows. Um, but we don't get them as consistently as we would expect to um, if we're looking at past periods. So, so the blue lines there count the number of days in a row that we've had more new highs and new lows. The orange lines are more new lows and new highs. Um, typically in sustained periods of strength, you, you tend to have lots and lots of <laughs> more new highs and new lows and can, many days in a row of that. Um, over the past year, it's been choppy even as price trends have improved and we've had a few days of more new highs, it hasn't really built on itself. Even this week, um, Monday, we had more new lows than new highs. Yesterday, we had more new highs than new lows. So it continues to be beneath the surface choppier than we would expect in a period of sustained strength, but also strong enough to argue for sustained strength, if that, if that makes sense. It's not, it's not as robust as we would like to see and what we typically see, but it has been on the positive side of the ledger. And so um, that, that's, that's a bit of solace, even if it's not as robust as we'd like to see it. Okay. So it's a big improvement though, because we haven't, I mean, we were still making a lot of lows. So, I mean, this does speak to the concentration in the market too, though. Oh, it, it does. But at the same time, um, I was just looking at it last night, six of 11 sectors in, in the S&P 500 made new highs last week. Um, and it's, it's not just tech. I mean, industrials, financials, and healthcare were in there as well. Half of all industry groups in the S&P 500 made new highs last week. And so, so we, we focus on, on the, the mega caps and, and the distorted effect they have on some of the price action. But whether it's in the U.S. or around the world, breadth is good enough right now to support sustained strength right here. All right. Hey, last one. What about the sentiment? What about uh, the animal spirits? Are they problematic? Um, well, and this, yeah, I, I, think, I think then we go, we, we talk about breadth being good enough to support a move higher. Then you look at what's happening from a sentiment perspective. Um, this is a consensus uh, bullish sentiment indicator. I like it because not as many people follow it. So it's not as much in the news as much. And it's more stable than some of the, the NAIM or AII um, indications and what it shows is that investors are the most optimistic that they've been in about five years. And the last time they were this optimistic, the S and P 500 proceeded to move sideways for 18 months. So, um, it would be healthier if people weren't so bold up on stocks, but if breath holds up, I think we can look past those sentiment headwinds of all the problems to have, 
I generally am a believer that the high sentiment animal spirits problem is probably the best one to have, right? Because it's momentum, but it's just, uh, you know, sometimes you can trip over yourself if you run too fast, but as long as you don't do that, then you just keep running fast until it happens. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Two, so, so two points on that. One, optimism can stay high for extended periods of time. Yes, it's exactly. a, you know, the sentiment is a much better indicator from a pessimism perspective than an optimism perspective. And it does take bulls to have a bull market. So you you need some optimism there if prices are going to move higher. Exactly. All right. Good stuff. Great to uh, get your analysis, Willie. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thanks, Oliver. Willie Dulles, investment strategist at High Mount Research.